Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and God's mercy endures forever. We serve a mighty God. We serve a marvelous God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Can you just give God praise? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I forever give you praise. I'll forever give you praise.
talk about it. We do bless you, Jesus. We honor you, we sanctify you. And oh God, we will praise you forever. We have so much to praise you for, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you for allowing us to see this day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your kindness, oh God. Thank you, hallelujah, because you're a God all by yourself. And oh God, we do bless you. We honor you, we sanctify the great name of Jesus. And oh God, we love you. God, we love you, Jesus. You are so awesome in our life, oh God. Hallelujah, you protect us. God, you keep our hearts in courage. God, as we walk with you. Hallelujah. Lord, you told us to cast all our cares on you. For you care for us. And oh God, we will praise forever. We will bless your name forever. We will sanctify you forever. Because you are the great God of heaven. And oh God, you're yet in control. We do bless you, Jesus. We do bless you, Shekamoya. We do bless your name. We honor you, God. We give you the honor and glory. Have your way today. Oh God, bless and anoint pastor today. Oh God, keep our hearts and courage as we walk with you. And we will praise you forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to continue to give God a praise. We know that we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. I thank God for the name of Jesus. Amen. There's power in His name. There's deliverance in His name. Your great name.
service. Thank God for the praise team and for the ministers who shared during this service. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Just before we go into the message, I do have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, the first and foremost announcement is, even though it is a rainy day, we are going to gather at 1230 for our parking lot prayer. I will be praying from under the pavilion, so I am not that concerned about the rain. You will be praying from your car, so you need not be concerned. If you want to come, come at 1230 this afternoon. Also, this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. I want to shout out to everybody and wish you a happy Thanksgiving. We will be gathering in the parking lot on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. We are so used to having a Thanksgiving service. It is ingrained in us here at Bethesda, and so I do not feel to totally remove the tradition from us, even though we are in the midst of a pandemic. So we're going to gather in the parking lot at 11.30 on Thursday, and we are going to have a family prayer. So come on and join us Thursday at 11. Also write this down on your calendars, December 9th 
from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Montgomery County will be on our campus here at 3701 Salem Avenue to give free COVID-19 testing. All you have to do is show up in your mask. You don't need to bring money and you don't need a doctor's slip. They will test you on site and you'll get your results in a couple of days. So again, that is December 9th at 12 p.m. from 12 until 5 p.m. Hope to see you. All right, let's go into the Word of God today. And since it is the week of Thanksgiving, and I am feeling mighty thankful because God has blessed us and kept us thus far through hurt, harm, danger, and pandemic, I am so very grateful and I want to share today one of the things that I am most thankful for. So if you will turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number five, I want to read verses 17 through 21. Romans 5, 17 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being so kind and so good to us. We bless you for this day, and we give you thanks for this service. Thank you for the praise, the worship that has ascended before you from the walls of this sanctuary. I pray that you will receive the praise and the worship as an acceptable offering unto you. And honor the praise, honor the worship by giving us a word. We need to hear from you today. And so we're asking that you would send a word that would bless our hearts and cause us to love you that much more. As for this vessel, I ask simply clarity of thought, precision of expression, strength for this body to declare the word of your truth as well as the truth of your word. But most of all, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, my firm and impenetrable rock, and my redeemer. I ask these favors in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give God praise wherever we are? Those of you who are in the sanctuary, those of you at home, give God the praise. Now I want to draw your attention from the text to the final two verses of our text and we'll sort of concentrate there or at least bring it home from there. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Today for a subject 
And just for a focus point, I'd like to use these words. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. I believe that for many, it may be easier to accept Jesus as Lord than it is to accept him as Savior. Let me put it another way. It is easier to comprehend his power than it is to comprehend his mercy and his grace. People today are caught up in power and in that which gives them a sense of power. But grace is a concept that is foreign to the unbeliever and often strange at best to the believer. We mention grace a lot. We have much to say about it. But I wonder if we really understand the concept that that word represents. God's grace is truly amazing. Read the first four chapters of this epistle to the Romans, and if they tell you nothing else, they will tell you that we are living or are invited to live a life that we do not deserve. And that is the beauty of grace. So today, I want us to give thanks to God for his grace. But what exactly is grace? Well, let me give you some theological definitions first and then we'll work through what grace really means to us. Grace is the sovereign and saving favor of God manifested in the granting of spiritual blessings to the guilty and to the unworthy. Grace is the favor of God exercised in sending blessings upon those who have no worth in themselves without any demand for compensation. It is completely undeserved. Grace is unsought and totally unattractive, uh, unattracted by anything in or from or by those who receive it. Grace cannot be bought. Grace cannot be earned. Grace cannot be won. If it could be, it would not be grace. And in truth, grace is exactly what we all stand in need of where God is concerned. I've said it before, and I will say it again. God is a holy God. As a matter of fact, the Bible reveals the holiness of God before it reveals the love of God. The Bible emphatically declares over and over that God is holy. The truth is, holiness is one of the first things that man learns when he encounters the God of the universe. When we come into the presence of the true and living God, we are at best uncomfortable. And even more accurately, we are afraid. We are afraid because we are not holy. That was the experience of the father of all men when he fell from a state of innocence and holiness. Recall, if you will, these words found in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. And they heard the voice of Yahweh God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh God amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahweh God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, 
and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That has been the lot of mankind since Adam. We are afraid of God and we hide ourselves. But our lot goes deeper than that. Paul described the fate of man in our text, and that fate is a direct result of the sin of Adam. Let me explain it in the words of the Apostle Paul. He said, by one man's offense, death reigned by one. By the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. And he said, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. In those three sentences, we have three simple words that sum up the state of all mankind. Sinners, judgment, death. That was our lot. That was our fate. All because of Adam. There was only one injunction, one rule, one law imposed upon Adam by God. That rule was do not eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden. But Adam wanted the one thing that he was not allowed to have. He wanted the fruit from that forbidden tree. Placed in paradise with everything good and only one thing forbidden. Adam failed. We all know the story. The serpent beguiled Eve, hoodwinked Eve into eating that forbidden fruit. She gave to Adam and he ate too. But I want you to understand the difference between Adam and Eve. Paul explained that difference to us in 1 Timothy 2 verse 14 where he said Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression Eve was deceived but Adam deliberately sinned Eve was tricked but Adam ate that fruit knowing that it was the wrong thing to do. He was not at all deceived, not in any way. He made a deliberate choice to do wrong. He made that choice with his head held high as if to say, I can do what I want. Genesis 3 verse 6 says, and he did eat. And he did eat. Those are the four saddest words in human history. Why do you say that, Pastor? I say that because issuing from those four words are all the troubles in this world. From that one willful act, disobedience that one willful act of disobedience awesome and terrible consequences flowed across all history worst of all the consequences though is the fact that Adam's transgression caused a disconnection between God and man Adam's sin alienated all of us from God. It also left us without a means to draw near to God. We were in a predicament from which we could not extricate ourselves and with no way to rectify it. But God in his love and God in his mercy gave a system of approach that has come to be known as the law of Moses. That law allowed at least some movement toward God. 
uh, when there was no way of drawing near to him, the law helped us to come closer to it. It's prescribed rules and regulations gave some semblance of association with God, but it also delineated a system of conduct that was to be assiduously observed. The law was a blessing from God. Listen to how the psalmist David described the law in the 19th Psalm. He wrote, the law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them thy servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Sounds wonderful, but there lies the rub. Man could not keep the law. There's the problem. Although the law of the Lord is perfect, man is far from perfect. Although the judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether, man is altogether unrighteous. And so instead of the law being a blessing, it became a curse. Instead of it being our ally, the law became our enemy. In our text, Paul declared the law entered that the offense might abound. Not that we might abound, but that the offense might abound. Instead of it being our life, it has become our enemy. Paul even went as far as to say, I had not known sin, but by the law. And he intimated that the law pointed out our sin when he said, the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So that wonderful vehicle of association with God became our detractor. It became a prosecutor and a judge. The law became a mirror of mockery for us. And I say that because we could look into the law and see our sinfulness, but we could find no remedy in the law. We could find covering for our sin, but we could not find deliverance from our sin. The law could tell us when we sinned, where we sinned, how we sinned, and just how long we'd be paying for that sin, but it gave us no antidote against sin consequently no victory over sin. Mankind was in a sad and sorry situation because of Adam and because of our own sins. Adam failed in Eden. Those who followed Moses failed in the law and the rest of us failed in life. There was no cure because the sickness of sin was terminal and because no one could keep the precepts of the law, all were consigned to the punishment of the law. But thank God that is not the end of the story. 
Paul said in verse 17 of our text, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to thank God for grace right now. It has been made abundantly clear to us that in Adam all die. Death comes with Adam. Death comes to all of Adam's progeny. If you are in Adam, death is your lot. But thanks be unto God for grace. It was because of grace that Jesus came into the world. And according to the Gospel of John, when Jesus came into the world, he came full of grace and and truth. But not only did he come full of grace, he also came full of life. And I just came by to tell somebody that there is life in Jesus. Jesus is the antidote to death. He's the antidote for the death that we received in Adam. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came for the purpose of restoring life. Jesus came for the purpose of counteracting death. Paul explained it to us in Romans 5, 5 15 through 19 by drawing conclusions and uh, comparisons between the deeds of Adam and the deeds of Jesus. Can I elaborate for just a minute. Paul put it like this or told us that the offense of Adam brought death unto many while the gift of grace because of Jesus abounded to many. The offense of Adam brought judgment unto condemnation. But the righteousness of Jesus brought justification of life. The disobedience of of Adam made many sinners, but the obedience of Jesus has made many righteous. And I just stopped by to tell you, all of this was accomplished by grace. By grace, Jesus came from heaven to earth to show us the way. By grace, Jesus went from the earth to the cross, our debt to pay. By by grace he went from the cross to the grave and from the grave to the sky and when you consider it you ought to just lift your hands on high and give God some praise I wonder if there's a praiser in the sanctuary is there a praiser watching at home now why don't you just take a break and give our God praise for his grace. On this, the 15th day of our praise pandemic, the subject for the day, or the praise for the day is grace. I praise him for his grace. And I preach just a little bit more. This phenomenon called grace is mentioned 170 times in your Bible. 131 of which are found in the New Testament. That tells us that the concept of grace is a tremendously important concept. Not only that, but those verses reveal the nature and character of grace. And if you're not feeling quite thankful for grace yet, just take a look at a little of what the scriptures have to say about this thing called grace. According to Ephesians 1 and 7, we are forgiven by grace. According to Ephesians 2 and 8, we are 
saved by grace. According to Romans 3, 24, we are justified by his grace. According to Romans 5 and 15, grace is a gift to us. I wonder, are you feeling thankful yet? If not, let me continue. According to Romans 6, 14, grace is our new operating system. According to 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, grace is our new operating factor. It is grace that empowers us. It is grace that gifts us. It is grace that impels us. It is grace that unctions us. According to 2 Corinthians, Nine and eight, there is an abundant supply of grace. According to Second Corinthians, twelve and nine, there is enough grace sufficient for our needs. And according to our text, where sin did abound, grace superabounded, and some on of that. Let me put it like this. Where death once reigned, grace now is king. When sin got tough, grace got tougher. When sin got rough, grace got rougher. When sin had us bound, grace set us free. When sin understood, Grace gave us life when sin gave us hell. Grace gave us heaven. So you just harder. You just harder. You really harder. Thank God for His grace. Grace is the hero of a life story. Grace is our rescuer. Grace is our Said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was bound, but now I'm blind, but now I see. I thank God for grace. And I just came to bless God and celebrate God for His grace. As a matter of fact, I stand with the late Bishop Andre Crouch and I say, Amazing Grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I did not know just why he came to love me so. But he looked beyond my thoughts and saw my needs. And so I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view Marvelous, His grace that caught my fallen soul. He looked beyond my fault and fall. He saw my needs. Did he see your needs? Did he see your needs? Did he see your needs? Then go ahead, wherever you are, bless God for grace. Thank God for grace. Praise God for grace. Honor God for grace. Magnify God for grace. Exalt God for grace. Extol God for grace. Let's give God thanks. Let's show our gratitude because God's grace.
offer this challenge to those who have taken on the praise pandemic challenge. And if you haven't, you still have time to join us. And if you haven't told your friends, challenge them. But from this day to next Sunday, include grace in your praise in your one minute of unrestrained and unremitting praise include the grace of God which is the reason you have the ability to praise him with a free heart let's take a few seconds and just praise him now for his grace you may be now. It took grace to get you to where you are. And as quiet as it's kept, it'll take grace to get you from this place to that place. Ah, grace got us from hell to earth. And grace will get us from earth to glory. Somebody ought to thank him for his grace. And if you have not actively received God's grace, if you have not yet taken advantage of the grace of God, what I want you to do at home is just hit me up in my inbox and say, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to take advantage of the grace of God. I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I receive it. So you hit me up and God will do the rest. I promise you, you're not too far for God to save you. You're not too wrong for him to make you right. You're not too bad. You're not too dirty for God to clean you up. And he does it by this magnificent vehicle that we call grace. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his grace smile upon you. We're gathering in the parking lot in about a half hour. Hope to see you there. But until then, we're going to ask God's blessing upon you. Father, thank you. First and foremost, thank you for your 
grace that is nothing short of amazing. I bless you for all who have tuned in today and all who are in the sanctuary. I thank you, Master, that you have reminded us to be grateful for one of the greatest gifts, if not the greatest gift, that you have bestowed upon mankind because all others flow from it. Salvation flows from grace. Receiving the Holy Ghost flows from grace. Receiving the gifts of the Spirit flows from grace. It all starts with this wonderful gift and we thank you for this gift of grace. Now, Master, bless us through our week. Watch over, protect us, keep us in your care by your grace. We will certainly give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due you. I ask these favors in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget, praise him this week for his grace. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, till we meet again on Sunday. Praise him for his grace. And until next time, keep looking up. God bless you all in Jesus' name.